Since I've got the radio arm saws up and running, there were a few more things I wanted to do. We're finishing up a little project. One was to add some clamps to the fence so that I can hold down work pieces and not have to worry about trying to hold things with my hands as much. And this is why the fence was so wide, so that I could put these clamps on top of the fence. The clamp right on the left end of the fence had a little conflict with the piece that covers the dust collection, so I had to trim a corner off, but this ended up working just fine. And I used the bolts that hold the clamps on to go all the way down into the table so that they would also hold the fence down to the table. <laughs> so I thought it'd be cool to make a cover Huh. So, I thought it'd be cool to make a, a cover for the blade guard, mostly just to make it look more finished. And I'm thinking it'd be neat to make it out of plexiglass, and it would be on the front. But I need to figure out where these holes are, so I need to put this in the right place. This wood cover is, was just a test piece to see if my drawing was the right size and I had the cutouts in the right places so it would fit. And it, it seemed to work just fine. Once I had everything set, I could then cut out the, the final piece out of plexiglass. I still haven't really mastered cutting plexiglass on the CNC. It, it gummed up the bit just a little bit. It worked, but it wasn't quite as good as I think it could be. I think with plexiglass, you have to be more exact about your, your speeds and your, your bit speed and your bit travel speed than you do with wood. So it was, it was pretty good, but I got it a little better by sanding the edge. Then I could transfer where the holes would go, and I checked it on the saw cover, and they were still a little bit different. I then drilled the holes on the drill press so I could get them exactly where they needed to be. I could do these holes with a CNC, but it would have taken a lot of measuring and hoping that they'd be in exactly the right place instead of just doing the holes manually with a drill press and getting them right where they needed to be based on the cover. Then I could put them in place. Now I got stainless steel screws, so I hope they don't corrode with the aluminum cover over time. At least that's the hope. <laughs> Now there's a little piece of plexiglass that goes on the front of the cover. And for this, I countersunk the two holes. And I used countersunk screws to hold it on. There was a little piece of plexiglass in this position when I got the saw, but it was completely covered with wood resin and sawdust and pretty much not cleanable. So I just cut a new piece. Now the other thing I wanted to make, the gates for the dust collection are hard to get out because there isn't really a handle on them. So what I thought I would do is make handles for them. And there's one on each side, so I'll have one of these gates in place on the saw that I'm not using at any particular time. I had a piece of scrap maple that probably came from a piece of firewood that I cut into a square. Then I could find the center for the tailstock, and I could mount it on the lathe and use that center on the tailstock and turn it into a cylinder and start to part it into two pieces and cut those pieces off. Then mount the two shorter pieces separately and do each knob separately. I didn't really have a plan or a shape for the knobs and in fact really even if it was just a, a peg it would have worked but I just turned sort of a, a roundish shape that you can grasp and pull against. I only had a certain amount of height underneath the dust collection hood so I had to stay within that. I think it was two and a half inches or some, something like that. Then I could part off the knob and then cut off the last little bit with the saw. Then I sanded the bottom 
just to get it nice and flat. So I wasn't really sure quite where to put it on the gate, but I decided right in the center probably made the most sense. So I found the center and then drilled the hole. Now I put a full size countersink on the bottom and then, then a little bit of a countersink on the top. That'll be under the knob. So any of the material that sort of gets pushed up by the screw won't push the knob up off of the surface. And I drilled the hole in the knob just by hand. It doesn't have to be all that precise since you'll never see it. And that works a lot better. That makes it much easier to get the, the gates out. And when the gate is in place, there's no airflow, so the knob's not in the way of the, of the air. And when there is airflow, there's no knob, so it, it works. I thought about doing a hole in the gate to be able to lift it out, but then that negates the whole purpose of the gate, because there'd be a hole in it. Now the last thing I wanted to do was to take the panic switch off of the nose of the big radial arm saw. It just, it just didn't look very good there. <laughs> So I pulled the wiring apart to figure out what was going on and found that it was actually pretty simple. There's just two wires going up into the switch that's under the, under the button. And there's just two connections to the switch. So I just pulled that apart and I pulled the box off. I got the two little screws off and I thought it was just going to lift off, but it wasn't. And it turns out there was a little threaded conduit running through the arm of the saw into the box. Now I threaded a wire with three wires that, that I only used two of. But I threaded the, the black wire through the arm of the saw and out the back of the saw and around the back of the table. And then under the table. So I now have the wires going from the switch to the panic switch under the table. And it worked on the first try, which usually isn't the case. Now I wanted to mount this on the underside of the table at the edge of the table. So I needed to make a bracket to go between the box and the underside of the table. So this bracket is an L with two diagonal braces between the two legs of the L. It sort of ended up being a box cut diagonally. So I put the L together with glue and nails. Then I put the triangular brackets on with glue and nails. And it was a little bit long, so I cut it shorter once it was glued together. And I sanded it all flush. Then I could attach the box to the bracket. And I used the little piece of conduit to, to help with that. And I just screwed the box to the vertical face of the bracket. And I could re-thread the end of my wire into the box and reattach the switch. Then I had a, a switch on a bracket that I could attach to the underside of the table. So that got put aside for a little bit. And what I wanted to do is make a piece of somewhat tall trim that goes around the table of the radial arm saws. And this will help make the table look a little more finished and it'll give me a place to put the panic button. So I had a piece of old growth fur that I salvaged from the kitchen when we redid the kitchen in the house. And it was long enough for the front of the table and to make the two sides of the table. So I'll put trim on the, the two short ends in the front and then leave the back, because you won't. One, it would be really hard to put the trim back there and you'll never see it back there anyways. So I mitered the corners and I put the trim in place. And the thought was to make a flap in that trim that I can hit either with my hand or my leg to turn the saw off. So it's sort of a, a big panic bar. So I'll cut a big notch out of the long piece of trim. And this was a little bit hairy doing this, but it worked okay. Now 
Then I can cut the two sides. And I didn't want to go into the, the little bit at the top. So I, I stopped a little short with the table saw and I did the last little bit by hand. Because as you'll see in a minute, the, the top piece is just a really small, thin piece that just covers the thickness of the, of the table. So you can see how it's going to go on there. Now for the little flap, I used the piece that I cut out. And with the hinge, it was going to be just a little bit too tall. So I cut it down a little bit. And I want to be able to hit this with my leg, so I rounded over the outside corner of the flap. Then to attach the hinge, I just flipped the flap <laughs> around, then centered the hinge over the seam, and put in all the screws. Now I had done a project a while back where I was centering screws in some brackets and someone had mentioned a, a VIX bit, I think that's what it's called, which I ended up getting. And they're super helpful for centering a hole in a hinge hole. There's no guesswork, you, you just put it in place and drill your hole. Then I pre-drilled holes in the trim. I want the table to be replaceable. So I didn't want to use glue or nails on the, on the trim, so I just used screws. So I did the side, then I did the front, and then I did the other side. Keeping the, the miters as tight as I could, and the top of the trim flush with the table. So now I can mount the switch, and it needs to go in just the right place, so it sort of holds the flap flush with the rest of the trim. But it's just a simple mechanical connection where you hit the flap and it pushes the button. So I can turn the saw on and hit the flap and the saw goes off. So whether it works better than where it was before is debatable, but it looks a lot better. And the saw keeps its form instead of having a big pimple on the end of it. <laughs> so there's some upgrades on the radial arm saws. There's certainly more that I want to do, but at some point you just have to stop and, and just use it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>